Today's artificial intelligence may be inspired by the brain, but it isn't biologically grounded. It's like when a movie starts off saying inspired by true events and then goes off in whatever direction the writers and directors want. Today's artificial intelligence, particularly artificial neural networks and large language models, are great, but bear virtually no relation to how our brains function. Why does this matter? Two major reasons stand out, energy usage and common sense. Our brains operate on only 20 watts of power, less than my laptop. Yet brains excel at context awareness, abstraction, and common sense, areas where AI often fail. In this ongoing series about how your brain works, this episode will focus on why today's AI has little to do with how your brain works. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. I'm using our open source brain simulator projects for simulations and demonstrations throughout this video series. If you want to experiment on your own, you can download the Brain Simulator 2 from GitHub and try it out. Let's get started with this diagram, but don't click away, I only want to emphasize two things. This diagram shows a neural spike, a voltage pulse resulting from the movement of ions across the cell's membranes. First, let's observe the timing, and this is really important, the propagation delay, which is the speed that signals pass between neurons, is typically around a millisecond. But even under ideal conditions, a neuron can only repeat spikes slower than every four milliseconds because of its refractory period. Relative to electronics, these times are laughably slow. This has a huge impact on what sorts of AI processes are possible or impossible in neurons. Why so slow? Although the diagram plots voltage over time, it's important to note that neurons are not electronic devices. Signals aren't carried by electrons flowing through tiny wires, but rather by chemical gradients of ions. Because these ions carry a charge, we can measure them with electrodes, which is why neural activity often appears as a voltage trace like this one. But this does not change the fact that neurons are about a billion times slower than electronics. Most neural signals travel along axons at a leisurely 2 to 3 meters per second, a brisk walking speed, as opposed to electronic signals traveling in a wire at near the speed of light. Understanding this distinction is crucial when comparing biological neurons to artificial neural networks or digital circuits, which we'll get back to in a moment. These slow-moving neural spikes are all about the same size and shape. So how can they represent meaning? How can they carry information? Let's look at the simplest idea that a neural signal might represent a value. If we are restricted to spikes traveling along axons, there are only a few plausible ways to represent a value. First, the average spiking rate. Consider a spike train of 200 spikes per second as representing one value and 250 spikes per second as another. Most peripheral nerves use this type of signal encoding. Next is interspike timing. The interval between any two spikes can carry analog information, allowing precise resolution. Your nervous system uses a mechanism like this for sound directionality. Another approach is that multiple spikes in parallel across many neurons can convey intensity. The more fibers firing, the greater the value. Touch and pain nerves use this mechanism. Lastly, Individual spikes or bursts with specific meanings are likely the primary mechanism in your brain. 
An individual neural spike would have a specific meaning and the context and related connections define what that meaning is. I should add that we could look at the axon as a serial link and spikes could potentially encode serial signals the way computers do on a USB cable. But this is completely implausible in biology, so I'll ignore it. How many spikes does it take to set the value of a synapse? When we consider learning, perhaps 10 or 20 repeated spikes are required to adjust a synapse weight, meaning it would take 40 to 80 milliseconds. This is in stark contrast to artificial neural networks where each weight adjustment takes a fraction of a microsecond and the backpropagation algorithm cycles through thousands or millions of training samples. If neural networks were as slow as neurons, the backpropagation algorithm simply wouldn't exist because neurons are just too slow. In most artificial neural networks, a neuron computes a weighted sum of its inputs, applies a nonlinear activation function, and propagates the result forward. In neurons, there is no output value. There is either a spike or no spike. Internally, the neuron accumulates charges over time, and that means there is an internal memory factor but there is no way for other neurons to access this internal charge. And there is also leakage. The internal charge leaks away over time. And finally, remember that refractory period of four milliseconds? Incoming spikes during the refractory period are ignored. What all this means in neurons? For average spike rates, the faster the rate of incoming spikes, the more spikes will be lost during the refractory period. The slower the rate of incoming spikes, the more will be lost to leakage. The result? Any summation will never be precise because of lost spikes. And this representation is inherently slow, and the more resolution you want, the slower it has to be. With neurons representing a maximum of 250 spikes per second, you need enough spikes to count up to get the average. To differentiate a value of 250 from 249, you need an implausible full second to resolve the values. If you only want to represent 10 distinct values, you still need 40 milliseconds to differentiate 9 spikes from 10. And that would be the equivalent of a computer running at 25 hertz. Not gigahertz, megahertz, or even kilohertz, but 25 hertz. Interspike timing can be much more precise, but there isn't much a neuron can do with such a signal because it cannot be summed or weighted. With this type of representation, individual neurons can only detect which of two signals is spiking faster or fires first, or detect whether a signal is above or below a frequency threshold, given a pair of spikes. That means that with 10 neurons, you could differentiate 10 different interspike timings. The more values you want, the more neurons you need. Which brings us to signals in parallel. You could imagine 10 signals representing a gray level. If none are firing, it represents black. If all 10 are firing, it represents white. This is not very efficient, but this is how touch signals enter your brain. To map this to individual spikes, 10 neurons could each represent a single gray level or touch intensity from 1 to 10. And it can have that meaning with a single spike. Average spike rates, interspike timing, and spikes in parallel can easily be converted to this signal representation. And this approach is energy efficient because only a single spike is needed to represent a value. The downside, it may take more neurons, and the number of neurons predefines the number of different values. If your brain can differentiate 10 gray levels, it's a complete rebuild for it to learn to handle 20. What does all this mean for AI versus the brain? First, 
any AI algorithm which relies on floating point numbers is out the window. At best, a given signal might take on 10 discrete values. More than that, a spiking rate signal is just too slow to be useful. Likewise for synapses, as I covered in a previous video, if your algorithm relies on floating point synapse weights, it is not neurally plausible. Biological synapses are also limited to a few discrete values. Learning speed is always an issue and setting a biological synapse weight can easily take 10 to 20 spikes or 40 to 80 milliseconds, nearly a tenth of a second. Think about how many iterations your AI algorithm needs and you'll conclude that most AI learning is completely implausible as a mechanism for the brain, which can learn information in a single presentation. On the plus side, average rate, interspike timing, and parallel signals can easily be converted to single spike or burst signals with just a few neurons. From there on, it's clear sailing and signals can pass from level to level in just a few milliseconds. As a preview of coming attractions, just because we're in the digital world doesn't mean that all analog ideas are lost. Consider an instance where your brain needs to recognize a thing given its attributes. We will never get a perfect match because we won't ever sense the entire suite of attributes simultaneously. So, we fire bursts on all the attributes we know, and the result which fires first is the winner. The time it takes for the result to fire is proportional to the accuracy of the match. It's the confidence that the recognition was correct. So, if we want human-like AI, we need to ditch the fine-grained matrix multiplication in favor of spike and burst-based digital signals. Artificial neural networks may be inspired by the brain, but they are not biologically grounded. It's like when a movie starts off saying inspired by true events and then goes off in another direction. AI information representation and learning processes are fundamentally incompatible with how real neurons behave. To build truly brain-like systems, we must rethink AI from the ground up using spikes, bursts, context-sensitive learning, and graph-based knowledge representations that reflect how the brain navigates meaning. If energy efficiency, common sense, and flexible learning are the goals, then today's AI has taken the wrong road. The brain's architecture holds the clues but we must stop trying to squeeze neuron functionality into matrix multiplication and start building models that respect the native language of neurons, time, structure, and spikes. Next time, I'll dive into how individual neurons can recognize patterns. If these ideas resonate with you, if you want to see where they lead, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. And if you want to dig deeper, join the Future AI Society. It's free and help us shape the next generation of intelligent systems. And you can participate in our online conversations. And as always, thanks for watching.